In 2021, the top 0.01% richest individuals now holds 11% of the world's wealth. To give you a clue, this only consists of an estimated 520,000 individuals and at the same time, the top 1% grabbed 38% of the total accumulated wealth since the mid-1990s, while the bottom 50 just captured 2%. Why the big difference in numbers? Should we blame the rich for hoarding all the money? Well, this book by Robert Kiyosaki explains to us the difference between the mindset of the rich and the poor, why the rich are getting richer, and the poor, poorer, how the simplicity of understanding the basic of finance has led to this drastic difference. So with that, let's start. As a young age, Robert Kiyosaki was exposed to the different opinions of his two dads, the rich dad and the poor dad. One was smart, had a good college degree, while one wasn't even a graduate of college. If we look at the outside, we would think the other one was more successful than the other because of his educational achievement. But what we don't see is, the number of diplomas and titles does not guarantee someone's financial status. One may have a high education, but one important thing that he failed to study is, to be financially literate, how to handle his money properly. The poor dad believed that the love of money is the root of all evil, while the rich dad said the lack of money is the root of all evil. One said I can't afford it, while the other forbade those words to be used. He insisted, how can I afford it? One again said the reason I'm not rich is because I have you kids, and the other, the reason I must be rich is because I have you kids. One said our home is our largest investment and our greatest asset, while the other believe my house is a liability. The contrasting belief of two dads went on and on, but the contrast in belief has led to the huge difference between the two. One lived a life of financial struggle, while the other became one of the richest men in Hawaii. One died leaving tens of millions of dollars to his family, charities, and his church. The other left bills to be paid. To this, we can see that those diplomas are nothing if your mindset about finance is in the opposite direction. One may have started broke and didn't have those fancy diplomas, but what made him rich was him having the right mindset towards money. Remember, there is a difference between being poor and being broke. Broke is only temporary. Poor is eternal. This brings us to the first lesson. The rich don't work for money. First, let's start with this question. How can I make more money? Now let's answer this this way. Life is the best teacher of all. Most of the time, it does not talk to us. It just pushes us around. Each push is life saying, wake up, there's something I want you to learn. The thing is, if you learn life's lesson, you will do well. If not, it will just continue to push you around. Sadly, this is the side where most people are. They just let life push them around. Why do they not improve? Well, first and foremost, they want to blame others for their problems. They aren't getting a raise, they're poor and they blame the government is corrupt. Meanwhile, some are just hoping for a miracle that a big breakthrough will solve all their money problems. Rich Dad explained that we best change our point of view. Stop blaming and thinking that others are the problem. If you just realize that you're the problem, then you can change yourself, learn something, and grow wiser. Because most people want everyone else in the world to change but themselves. Let me tell you a secret. It's easier to change yourself than everyone else. Now, what does this connect to our question a while ago? How can we make more money? Well, that's the first answer to it. Don't do the things that other people have been doing all this time. Listen to what life is telling you. If you're seeing that working for money isn't leading you to reach your goals, then learn to be wiser. Learn how to change. This is the first step you can do to get out of the rat race. Don't make the same mistake as what the vast majority are doing. Most people cling to their job just to feel secure. They eagerly await paydays and wish for a larger salary, thinking this would solve all their problem. But most, if given more money, only get into more debt. This is where the rich and the poor is different. The rich given more income generates more income through it, while the poor given more money acquires more expenses and worse, more debt. Remember, the rich don't work for money. They always let their money work for them. The poor works for money because of their fear, greed, and their desire. Fear of not able to pay their bills every month, and when they get their paycheck, greed and desire kicks in. 
thinking about all the wonderful things money can buy, at which if you offer them more money, they will continue the cycle by increasing their spending and buying the things that they could not afford through debt. This goes on and on. This is what I mentioned a while ago, the rat race. It's just like the picture of a donkey dragging a cart with its owner dangling a carrot in front of it. The donkey's owner may be going where he wants to, but the donkey is chasing an illusion. Imagine this is what most people's lives are, working every day, chasing an illusion. In order to get out of this illusion, you need to be financially literate. This puts us to the most important lesson of all, understanding what is an asset and a liability. Like with our story, the other dad thinks his house is his greatest asset while the other think it's a liability. To understand how the cash flow of the rich and the poor works, Robert Kiyosaki explained this in a simple diagram. This is the cash pattern of an asset. Assets are the one that puts money in your pocket, generating income without the need of your presence, while a liability is something that takes money out of your pocket. This simple diagram, if you know it well, will make you rich. The goal is to increase your assets and as much as possible, decrease your liabilities. The rich spend their life buying assets while the poor and the middle class spend their life buying liabilities. Remember, illiteracy both in words and numbers is foundation of financial struggle. The rich are rich because they are more literate in different areas than people who struggle financially. In other words, in order to be rich and maintain your wealth, it is important to be financially literate in words as well in numbers. To give further detail to this, we look at the cash flow pattern of a poor person. Notice he receives income. It goes directly to his expenses, paying taxes, rent, food, transportation, and clothes, working just to survive. Meanwhile, the middle class, which generate more income, have extra money for liabilities, mortgage, car loans, credit card debt, school loans, C, more money, more expenses, and this cycle goes on for the poor and the middle class chasing the illusion that more money would satisfy their financial life. Now, this diagram shows to us how this cycle continues. As their income grow, they increase their liabilities. This creates a ripple effect of increasing their expenses. They earn more. This means they can afford to buy a bigger house or a fancier car. This is the foundation of today's debt-ridden society. Now, let's look at the cash flow of a rich person. By acquiring a lot of assets, it has now become their main source of income, getting consistent passive income. These assets are bonds, stocks, real estate, businesses that don't require their physical presence, and other passive generating assets. To give more detail, let's look at another diagram showing why the rich are getting richer. As their income grow, their assets grow along with it, and at the same time, liabilities and expenses decrease. For our house example a while ago, at which a house takes money out of your pocket, this falls in the liability column. Now, this doesn't mean you don't buy a house, but what the rich does is, they have assets that can afford to maintain or buy a house for them, unlike the poor and the middle class, which tend to take it directly from their one income source and even go to a loaning money for it, acquiring more liabilities. Now, these diagrams are so simple, yet the simplicity is what makes people confused. They think that it's too simple enough to solve their problems. Like what was mentioned, the most important lesson of all is to understand the difference between an asset and a liability. Once you understand the difference between the two, you can concentrate on buying income-generating assets. This is the best way to get started on a path to becoming rich. Keep on adding and adding to your asset column. Keep liabilities and expenses down so more money is available to continue pouring into the asset column. Because if you don't understand this simple financial literacy, you will continue what the masses do. They work for their company, making their business owners rich or their shareholders rich. They work for their government because of their taxes. The government takes its share before you even see your money. By working hard at best, you simply increase the taxes the government will take. And lastly, they work for the bank because of their loans, mortgage, and credit card. Always living in the illusion of working for money. Always in the rat race. So learn to acquire more cash flow producing assets. Make it a goal. This way you have the ability to survive so many number of days forward, even if you stop working today, meaning your assets is already generating enough money to cover your monthly expenses. This should be your goal. Now, there are some out there who may not be rich, but already have assets that cover all their expenses. The next goal should be to have excess cash flow from your assets reinvested into the asset column. This way you not only survive, but also grow your asset column further. 
So the more assets grow, the more your cash flow grows. And as long as you keep your expense less than the cash flow from your assets, the richer you grow developing more income sources other than fiscal labor. As the process continues, you are well on your way to becoming rich. It's that simple. Robert Kiyosaki reminded this as the KISS principle, meaning keep it simple stupid or keep it super simple. The more you understand this rule, the better your financial journey would be. To summarize things up, the rich buy assets, the poor only have expenses, while the middle class buy liabilities they think are assets. This creates that big gap to the rich and the poor. With that, this ends this video. So if you've learned something, might as well click the like button before you leave. And if you still aren't subscribed yet, now is the time you do. So thank you and see you in the next video.